You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Okay, well, welcome everyone to This House of Books. Uh, I have with us uh, Charlotte Sing uh, Hinger, and mm -hmm. she's a uh, finalist for the uh, High Plains Book Awards. Uh, and we're going she has a, a terrific book out and we're going to talk about that in a minute but first maybe we'll talk about you charlotte tell us a little about yourself uh i'm a native kansan i moved to colorado after the death of my husband i grew up in anderson county uh in a very very small town lonell kansas and as far as what inspired me to be a writer I was, as usually most writers are, just an absolutely incessant compulsive reader. And the highlight of my week was going to Garnett, Kansas, where I would check out every book I was allowed on the library card. And also I would sneak some on my sister's and my parents' library cards. And I, about the time I was in the seventh grade, I knew I wanted to be a writer, but it was as fantastical and mystical as say being a, a circus performer. I didn't know anyone who was a writer. I couldn't imagine how this would ever come about. And so I went to Fortes at that time and got my bachelor's and moved on and got a master's in history and was publishing um, mystery books. And I have an academic book about uh, Nicodemus that was published by uh, Oklahoma University Press. But I also wrote this novel based on it. If you want the facts, go to nonfiction history. Uh, it's quite a different kind of writing and it's really, really hard. If you want the truth, write a novel because of the characters. Interesting. <laughs> well, you mentioned uh, your academic book uh, about Nicodemus mm -hmm. and uh, uh, tell us briefly what, what was Nicodemus? Oh, Nicodemus was the first um, all black community on the high plains. They were colonists basically from Kentucky who came to Kansas uh, after uh, reconstruction failed. Mm -hmm. uh, when the federal troops were pulled out of the South, things got so bad for blacks that they knew they weren't going to be able to, to stay anymore. Um, and the, as Henry Adams, one of the slaves that testified before the Voorhees Committee said, uh, it's time for us to go. Mm -hmm. It's just never going to work for us here. No. So they, they, there was homesteading land being given away in Western Kansas. And that's why they came. They had a chance for free land. Well, and uh, did, did they choose the name Nicodemus? I'm, I'm thinking of Nicodemus as the, uh, uh, the fellow who came to Jesus in the Bible. Yeah, John, right. John, and, and the main discussion they had had to do with rebirth. With, uh, actually, yeah, the Nicodemus as it applies to Nicodemus, Kansas, was an honor of one of the first freed slaves that came to America. Sure. And that's where they got that name. Uh, but you're right, it's also a, a very famous biblical reference uh, that of the man who came to Jesus to ask how he could be saved. So it fits on uh, maybe more than one level. It's a very I think so. In, the, uh, there was no doubt of the spiritual foundation to Nicodemus that's always been there. 
Right. I'm thinking, uh, well, the, the reason, of course, I'm asking about this is because uh, your novel, um, The Healer's Daughter, yes. uh, takes place in Nicodemus, Kansas. Yes. So tell us about the book. And also, I, I'm, I'm curious about the title. Um, what, what is a healer? Uh, many plantations had African-American women who were medicine women. And in my healer's daughter was a fictional character, but it is based on the reading I did about some of these marvelous African or African American women and some who were the brains behind the plantation. And included in that were these African American healing women. And some of them followed white men around on their on their rounds. So they knew both uh, white medical techniques and African-American techniques and some other kinds of African-American lore. And so Bethany is bringing this tradition to the plains. Uh, her mother was a famous, wonderful healer and so was her grandmother. You'll be happy to know that at the end of the book, I include writer's notes that kind of sort out uh, where it was fictional and where it was not. I, I can't tell you how much microfilm I own now and how much I read to put both books together, the um, academic book and the fiction book. Well, how did, how did the uh, healer's daughter become the central character in your book? She was important to me from an emotional standpoint uh, because she's told so much of the story of African-American women. Uh, the prestige that I think some people were unaware of and also the heartache they had to endure because they had the double stigma. stigma. Not only were they African-American, but they were also women. And they were suddenly uh, transplanted to the high plains where she could not even recognize some of the plants that she needed for healing. And she was called on right away. And it was a scary time to her and Yet she had this natural ability, but no one had the ability of her mother, Queen Bess. And that's a, a part of the book too. Who, who do you believe would be uh, the audience for this book? Who would, who would like to read it? There's such a resurgence of interest in African-American history. Uh, this is a very triumphant book because it echoes the role that Nicodemus actually played uh, in Kansas history. So not only historians, but I think uh, African-Americans or those interested in African-American history that would like to know more about positive roles so those who are interested right now in especially this resurgence of African-American history. Well, of course, it's, uh, it's all our history too. I mean, this is, this is the yes. history of the United States. And especially Kansas. Mm -hmm. I, I have a flaming state loyalty. Just practically everything I write is, is about Kansas. Well, this, uh, this book has received a lot of really very favorable recognition. It's, it's um, not only the High Plains Book Festival uh, finalist, which is really uh, a significant accomplishment. Uh, it's also uh, up for, 
were considered being considered for the Will Rogers medallion. Is that right? Yes, and I'm just thrilled to announce I won a Kansas Notable Book Award. And I'm just almost an embarrassment of riches this year in getting this much recognition for a book that meant so much to me. Well, I thank you so much for uh, joining us and visiting about your book and about yourself. Um, do you have anything you'd like to add at this point? No, except how deeply grateful I am to be a finalist for the High Plains Award. Um, I'm, I'm just thrilled to be included with this number of really outstanding authors um, I'm, I'm just, uh, can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Well, and we, we really appreciate the fact that uh, we, <laughs> we've had our attention called to your book. It just sounds fascinating. So thank you thanks so much again. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.